Yes, I know it just started the second quarter of 2022, but what's wrong with looking ahead to 2023? Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another uh, long-range forecast, I think I would say. Today, we're going to look ahead, guys, to some series that I'm interested in starting in 2023. Now, I know a lot of people think that's kind of early, but you can go back to the history of this channel. Every year around April, I start to look forward to some things that I like to do the next year. One, I think this helps plan things. Also, I, just, I used to work in risk analysis. I like to plan about 12 to 15 months in advance. So some people consider that crazy. Uh, for me, it's a lot of fun to kind of look forward and start planning ahead to some of the things that I would like to read. Now, I want people to understand this isn't like a saying, hey, I am going to read these next year. These are series I'm interested to start next year. You can go back and look at the ones where I had the plans for 2021 and plans for 2022. And you can see I didn't do all those series, but I did a large number of them. So with the reading freedom thing that I've kind of embraced this year, some of these things are going to happen. Some of them are not. But it is fun to look at right now and say, these are the ones I think I'm most interested in in starting. So in other words, these are series I have not started yet. So if it's something like, hey, are you ever going to continue the Expanse novels? Yes, I am. But that's not going to be something new that I would be starting. So we're going to look at about 10 of them here. And uh, again, like I said, these aren't in stone. So don't hold me to it. That if I don't list your series, well, I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm just saying right now, these are the ones that have me the most interested. So let's go ahead and dive into it first, guys. We are looking at the three-body problem or remembrance of Earth's past by Cheech and Lou. Now, with this, as I said, I wanted to read it before the Netflix adaptation came out. They haven't even started rolling cameras yet, so I'm pretty sure it's not happening this year. So I did originally plan to do it sometime this fall, but I decided I'm going to pick back up those Expanse books, like I said before. So uh, that kind of bumped these to sometime next year. It's a series I am very much interested in. Uh, I, I don't really know what to expect about it because I hear just varying things about it. Some people, it seems like people either absolutely love or they can't stand this series. Most people seem to really, really enjoy it. So before that adaptation does come out, uh, I will at least be reading the first book, Three Body Problem. And uh, I'm pretty sure that with this new thing I'm doing where it's like, I like to get like trilogies and just read them all like a month. Uh, I think that would probably be the plan of action for this series when it does happen. So I want to make sure I'm getting some more sci-fi on the list. And that's what, uh, one of the things that I definitely want to kick off with would be uh, Remembrance of Earth's Past. Next up, guys, I'm going to be looking at War for the Rose Throne. This is a series by Peter Macklin. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a trilogy. I think it just got pushed to a four-book series. And it's going to be complete sometime this year. I think book three is coming out and then like a month and a half later, book four comes out. So I think it was just one of those things where they had to split it and uh, they don't want to make the uh, the fans wait for it. So they're just kind of doing it on two separate releases. And in case you guys don't know, there's also this like paper shortage problem. That's why a lot of authors are splitting their books right now. I know a lot of people think it's just uh, they're trying to capitalize on the moment and that does happen. That does happen. Hey, Brent Weeks. But uh, I, I don't think that uh, that's uh, something that's going on here. I really do think that this is a, a paper problem. Lots of people that I've talked to, authors and people who work in publishing and series have said in the industry have told me that this is a problem so i don't know what the deal is there but as far as this series uh, i've heard very mixed things some people say it's uh, almost too hardcore for them uh that's just uh, it's uh, maybe too dark um obviously with me i'm like yes feed me more that sounds great i, I have no problems with that whatsoever so uh, uh bring it on i guess i don't know what else to, to understand i think some people said it's almost like a fantasy version of peaky blinders which would be great if I had ever watched Peaky Blinders, and now I know the main comment will be, oh my God, why are you making videos, you tool? Go watch Peaky Blinders. But hey, someday, right? Uh, I've talked about the next one here before, and uh, I know it seems like I'm kicking the can down the road. But uh, when I, I talked to my guy, Jake Bishop, uh, truthless of YouTube is what to call him, he uh, is very much a Robin Hobb stan, and he will go to war for Robin Hobb. That's why I find it weird when we did our little Talk About Nothing video. He sold me so hard 
on Green Bone Saga by uh, by Fonda Lee that I actually moved it in front of this one. So falling to 2023 20, most likely is going to be the Live Ship Trader series by Robin Hobb. Now this is uh, the second trilogy within the realm of the Elderlings. And uh, when I started Farseer uh, last year, I, I really said I was only committing to that. So I, I know a lot of people said they kind of felt like they've been teased, like they thought that I was just going to run through the entire realm of the Elderlings. I never promised that. Uh, I said I would do Farseer and then C. And I liked the first two books and the third book of Farseer was like, oh, for me. So I won't lie, that did kind of demotivate me a little bit, but I was still intending to get that in this year or at least try uh, Live Ship Traders. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to be doing Greenbone instead over the summer. So uh, that one is just kind of be taking a back seat here. And um, obviously, I think Robin Hobb is a very, very talented author. And I'm very excited about the things that I've been told about the series. What make it a little different they have Farseer, and it sounds very, very intriguing, even someone like myself that's not really much into the nautical books, uh, from what they've told me from the point of views and stuff that they have in the books, I think it'll be something that will be very exciting for me to get into. So that'll be happening sometime next year. Now, the next one just kind of depends on when I finish Malazan, because I said I don't want to I don't want to start this before I finish Malazan. Now, right now in the plans, I do still intend to finish Malazan in the 2022 calendar year these things can change, you know, because those last few books are chonkers. So I just want to make sure that I'm in a good place when I read those because I don't want to be hate reading up until the end. And uh, I've talked about why I delayed Malazan on here numerous times. It was never a thing about I'm not liking the series. It was that I need a break or else I'm going to start to not like it. So again, I don't want anybody getting upset about that. They think they get really upset when they think that I'm saying that I hating, I'm hating, hate reading Malazan. I'm stop because I don't want to hate read it. But I digress. I am not starting Gene Wolfe's book of the New Sun until I finish Malazan because like Malazan, I've been told it is very, very dense and it requires a lot of brain power and lots of uh, capacity upstairs. So I want to make sure that Malazan is gone and I can kind of, you know, archive that one in the brain a little bit and then open up a new file for book of the new sun and get into it. You know, I've been reading a lot of Sun Eater, Christopher Rocchio can't say enough great things about Gene Wolfe and his, uh, being one of his primary influences. So that that was already something that has interested me. And then, like I said, I want to make sure I'm getting more sci-fi on the channel here. And uh, Book of the New Sun is one of the most requested ones that I get along with Alistair Reynolds. So uh, that would probably be definitely the next heavy series that I start would be Gene Wolfe's Book of the New Sun. And uh, at the earliest, that would be starting in 2023. Now, I did just recently finish Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams. So everybody's going to say, did you know, obviously, did you like it? Obviously, yes, I did like it quite a bit. Uh, I think it uh, has a good shot of eventually uh, breaking into my top 10 fantasy series if I ever update that list. I don't know. Is that something you guys want? I think maybe. I don't know. See, the thing about that is I just don't know how much the list will change. But again, wrong video. Another time. But uh, am I going to be continuing with Ostin Art is the question I get a lot. Yes, but not right now. So why do I bring this up? I think it's because I'm going to flip to Otherland with Tad Williams in 2023. I think in my live stream the other day, someone said Otherland is kind of like Ready Player One on steroids. And that sounds intriguing as hell. So uh, I think I like Tad Williams' writing style enough to trust him with something else. But going into a little more sci-fi, like I said, I'm trying to angle into a little more sci-fi next year. Or I, I guess you would classify this one as sci fantasy. I don't know if that's really what it is or if it's just a thing where people think Tad Williams, you know, you, you you cut your teeth as a fantasy author. People think you can't write anything else. So when you write science fiction, they call it sci fantasy. I don't know. I don't know enough about this series to say, but I do have the first two volumes of Other Land, and I think I would definitely like to dip into that, at least, like I said, before I return to Ostin R, because uh, I do think I'm going to become a very big Tad Williams fan, and uh, I want to check out some of his other stuff before I get back into uh, the, the, the evil twisted land that is Ostin R. And now this next one here, guys, this is just, um, this is the first, like, well, I'd like to do it in 2023, but we'll see. We will see. And it can because it, I only want to read one dense series at a time, like I said. So I'm going to finish Malazan. Then it's Book of the New Sun. So say I get two of these big, heavy series in there next year. What's the other one going to be? Well, this is going to be the Prince of Nothing series by R. Scott Baker. And this is one that's just like on my Discord. People are just head over hills in love with the series. And when I talk to Mark from Slowly Red, 
he gave me the you know the hard press on it. And I said, look, I, I definitely do want to read the series, but uh, like I said, I don't think if I mix a lot of these heavy series at a time, I'm gonna kind of just get to, uh, just brain dead on it. And I don't wanna do that. So I wanna make sure that I kind of give it the space that it deserves. So I'm thinking like maybe the first half of 2023 would be Book of the New Sun, the second half of 2023 would be uh, The Prince of Nothing. And so if I continue with Aspect Emperor after that, well, obviously it just depends on how I feel about Prince of Nothing. The thing that worries me about it is a lot of people are saying like, oh, it's like very highly philosophical books and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, after after Malice, I don't know if I'm ready for more philosophy, especially if uh, I, I've heard the same thing about Book of the New Sun. So uh, with me, guys, look, I, I mean, I'm not against f philosophical books. I mean, hello, God Emperor of Dune is one of my favorite books ever. And uh, that's, you want to talk about navel gazing. I mean, I can do it quite a bit, you know. So um, I, we'll see. We'll see on that one. That's the first one where I could say like, okay, maybe I would start it, maybe not, just depending on how things go with Book of the New Sun and if I finish Malazan this year. We will really see, but I do am not going to keep, keep continuing to kick this down the road because you can go back to that very first video where I did uh, the series I want to start in 2021 and I did mention that as an honorable mention was Prince of Nothing. So it does seem like I'm just kind of kicking that one down the road a little bit. But you know, I did the same thing with Memory Star on Thorn for years and I just did it and loved it. So I don't plan to quit reading anytime soon, guys. So there will always be a place for these somewhere. Next up, this one is The Lotlands by Jonathan French. This is a series that's come highly recommended because people think I like uh, what is known as cussy books. Uh, because uh, one of my uh, viewers actually sent me the first book in the series and he said, I was reading this and I thought you would love it because uh, they, they use the F word about 137 times. Well, that does kind of sound very intriguing. Now, also another one when I talked to Mark, and he said it's very much like uh, like Sons of Anarchy, but in the fantasy world. You know, instead of you know bikes, they've got you know big beasts that they're riding. They call their hogs and things like that. That sounds neat. That sounds like a really neat idea. But uh, yeah, anything you got to um, look. I'm I'm a hooligan at heart. Sometimes I got no problems with the bad language. I, I love it quite a bit. I mean, I, I, one of the reasons when I first started reading First Law that I was just laughing out loud was just some of the bad language. Go back and listen to the stuff I just mentioned about Jay Kristoff. About what was one of my favorite things was like his ability to come up with creative swear words. You know, so um, I'm I'm easy to please on things like that, guys. I'm not a pro snob or anything. So uh, yeah, I like some bad language as much as the next guy. But uh, anything, any any new grim dark series, I'm obviously willing to give a chance. I always do unfairly probably compare it to first law but you know hey this is just uh that's just it that's just something you're gonna have to deal with with me but the lot lands i've heard most of the good things and i think that series did get completed this year so it is actually done now so that could be one that i could find myself kind of rolling through now you want to talk about another one that i've been kicking down the road for a while and at first it was like okay uh i want to make sure that the series is complete i mean i i've bought all the books and stuff i support the author because i've always said I understand these people now are saying, hey, I'd like to wait for the series to be complete. And I say that's unfair to a lot of authors, you know, because, you know, the, the first few books don't sell, they might not get another series. So I think the fair thing to do is to buy those books <laughs> and keep them on your shelf until it is time to start. And that's what I have done with The Song of the Shattered Sands by Bradley P. Bollier, whose name I know I continue to massacre, but you know, I do it the best I can. Like I said, I'm just going to call him Brad P. from now on. Kind of like I do with Denny V. Instead, did Denny Villeneuve? Uh, just, yeah, just say Denny V because uh, I just feel like I'm insulting someone by just completely just massacring their name all the time. But I already probably did that with Cheech and Lou anyway. So hey, here we are. But as far as this series goes, uh, I've always been told the exact way that this gets sold to me is this is the hidden gem of fantasy. And from what I've been told, he very much sticks the landing. And that's something I think is always very exciting to hear because, like, uh, go ahead and tell you a series that didn't make this list. This is Books of Babel uh, by Joseph Bancroft, and I've heard he did not stick the landing. Now, that's obviously never going to make or break a series for me. But when I hear that one series, when I've got this list down to 10, and I'm kind of eliminating one, or replacing one or keeping one, uh, I'm going to go with the one series that tells me, yeah, it's a great series and he really completely sticks the landing over the one where everybody, people who really, really love the series are like, oh man, that last book, woof, you know? So uh, yeah, I I'll never let that determine if I'm going to read a series or not, but it will up my excitement or not for it. I will not lie. That's why I still haven't done his Dark Materials, you know, because uh, I hear so many bad things about that ending. But again, I, I just can't stay on task tonight, you know? Do I ever... Do I ever? I think that's just kind of like, you know, the charm of my channel. I, I mean, I call it charm. I don't know what you guys call it. Probably you know, 
rambling, which is what I'm doing now. But yes, Songs of the Shattered Sands. I did promise uh, one of my moderators, Jane, that we were going to do this series together this year, and it just kind of got lost. When we decided to do Codex Alera. It kind of replaced that on my schedule. So uh, if Jane, if she's like really, really shaking the finger at me next year, we got to do this. Uh, yeah, I, we will definitely make sure that we move this one up rather early in 2023. And then maybe I can hopefully uh, get Mr. Bradley P on the channel because we have had some correspondence over the last year or so. So I'm very excited to dip into that. And again, guys, those those books, uh, I think you should buy them for the covers alone. Uh, the UK covers are just brilliant. I mean, they are just magnificent to, to look at. So they kind of make me think of like, you look at like the Wise Man's Fear cover by Patrick Ruffles. It's almost like in that same theme, but it has like the glossy. I, anyway, you got to look at them, guys. They're just, they're impressive. Maybe I'll flash a picture here. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Now, when I did talk about drips recently, uh, I said something that I wanted to kind of get into on this channel is making sure that I'm not falling into that trap of the rest of booktube and I, I feel like the rest i'm not trying to do like a broad generalization here but a large chunk of, of booktube it started to feel like everyone was covering the same seven or eight series no one was ever going outside their comfort zone they were always something that was probably in the last decade or so and they wouldn't go older than like wheel of time uh so i, I said you know i'm gonna do drich which is a couple years from wheel of time it's not like we're talking about like in the 60s or 70s here but I said I do want to kind of put a focus on some, uh, you know, what is considered older fantasy at this point, which is like about 30 years or, or greater. So when I put up that poll recently about what series uh, that I recently talked about you guys would like me to do, and uh, Dritz kind of won that. I mean, Greenbow won it, but I it was it was a. Anyways, I just wanted to, I was more interested in what came in second and third place to find out if there was interest on the channel. And there was obviously interest in Dritz. There's also, it seems like, a mild interest in the Rift War saga by Raymond Feist. So I decided I was going to do Raymond Feist over David Eddings because I know that those are always kind of, that are just kind of like two peas in a pod. They always kind of get compared. People were reading those around the same time, I believe. So I decided I was going to do the Rift War saga which is just, you know, Magician, uh, those three. The one that starts with Magician. Uh, I can never remember the name of the other ones. You know, I guess it's technically, it's like it's like a Memory Star and Thorn that's really like four books, but they combined it to make it three kind of thing. I think it's the other way around. I think that was actually released as two, and they combined them, whereas Memory Star and Thorn is just one, Green Angel Tower. And man, I cannot stay on task today. But uh, Rift War, I am interested in doing that one because uh, there are so many people who have really recommended it to me but uh, with these things, always, it's just like, do is there interest for that on the channel? Regardless if there is interest for it on the channel, it would be something that I would read and, and cover. But, you know, how much I cover these things always just depends on you guys. But I do feel like there's enough interest for Rift War, and there's enough interest for me. I own the trilogy, and I would really like to read that, uh, as well as continuing Dritz, like I said. Uh, so, uh, last up, guys, this one was kind of a tough choice because I had a lot that I was really interested in here. Some that did not make the gray, like... Uh, uh, Empires of Dust by Anna Smith's Mark was one I had to cut off. Uh, the Spell Slinger series by Sebastian Day Castell was one I had to cut off of here. Uh, obviously, Books of Babel, like I just talked about. Um, uh, Thomas Covenant was one I had to kind of cut off. Uh, was it Raven's Mark, I think, by Ed McDonald. So these are all some ones that are, that are on my radar and I'm interested in. Just don't know if they're going to happen in 2023 because I want to, like I said, I kind of want to stick with some of the classic, what's considered classics now, guys. Anything 25 years or older is considered a classic. I am a classic. You are most likely a classic. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking at the Cold Fire Trilogy by Celia Friedman, or C.S. Friedman, however you want to kind of look at that. Just because, again, like I said, I, I feel like there's a lot of these authors that have kind of just kind of gotten forgot about. And I think that's because there's not enough people on Book 2 talking about them. So I want to make sure that I'm not only just putting a magnifying glass in there, but I'm also broadening my own horizon. Uh, you know, I, I've already said I want to read more female fantasy authors, and I think I've done a good, pretty good job at trying to branch out into that. Uh, but I also want to make sure that I'm not just sticking to stuff that is, you know, the last 10 years or so. Make sure I'm continuing to just kind of spread it around a little bit. So the Cold Fire Trilogy, I think, I can't remember his name, but he was someone that used to be on my Discord a long time ago, and he was really, really high on the series, was really, really anxious to get me to try it. And I said, you know what? Now I think would be a good time to kind of put that one on the plans for 2023, and I get that in there. Again, as you can see, guys, these are mostly three at most four book series besides Song of the Shattered Sands. It's the only one really that's a little longer because I really like what I started doing when I did Nevernight, uh, when I did uh, with Anna Stevens, uh, uh, God, what was that series called? Godblind. 
Okay. Godblind. Like I said, classic. It's a classic brain right here. Uh, yeah, all those trilogies that I've been doing, I, I think it's really fun trying to fit those trilogies in one month, reading them back to back to back. It's really been a lot of fun instead of splitting them up over months. So that's something I think I'd like to continue going forward because it's really made for a fun reading experience. That along with like this reading freedom, as I keep calling it. But guys, those are the 10 that I'm most interested in starting in 2023. So I know there's going to be lots of people that say, I left off your series. So why don't you go ahead and drop in the comments and tell me why? Because if you guys look back to that, uh, the recommended series by viewers one that I did where I said I was not going to be reading Dritz this year, and now I'm reading Dritz starting next week. So uh, I do read the comments and I do take into counsel whatever you guys say. I really do think about what you guys are telling me. So if you guys have a series that I didn't list here and you really think that it's something I would like, try to sell me on it. I always love to listen to you guys so drop in the comments guys and let me know what you're thinking and i will talk to you there